So on my past few videos, I've gotten a lot of requests for a tutorial on how to make the animations that I've been making. So I thought I would make a tutorial on how to do it. I use Blender to model and then um, DaVinci, which is both of these are free applications to uh, composite all of the stuff together and create the final video. So um, in this video, uh, I'm gonna, everything in, it's a lot easier in Blender, like Blender has uh, realistic measurements. If you just use those measurements along with the, cause Starship is a real rocket, you can use realistic measurements and that often helps. Uh, you should also try to use reference images if you can. I'm not going to mostly in this video just because I've already modeled it a few times so I have a basic idea of how to do it but if you want a more accurate starship you should try to find some good reference images and pull them up behind the behind your model so you can get the accuracy that you need. And then also, uh, Starship is very advanced and very simple at the same time. Uh, you don't need to be that good at modeling to get a half decent result of a, a half decent model of Starship. However, if you are advanced in Blender and you have been doing this for a few years, you can try to go for some of the more advanced te techniques. Um, and also, I prefer to model everything. I find textures kind of confusing, but if you're good with textures and you can see an easier way to do some of this in textures, you can also do that. That's a good thing. This is just how I do it. You can take some of my techniques, use them, uh, and if not, implement some of your own techniques to find a better way to do this. So, I'm gonna start off by deleting the default cube and uh, shift A to add a new mesh and we're going to add a cylinder. So we're going to make ring segments for Starship starting off first. Um, I find that it's a lot easier if you don't subdivide these rings uh, using a modifier. So you should start off with a lot of vertices. So I use 128 I think. And then also for a radius, Starship has a radius of 4.5 meters, so you're going to want to put 4.5 meters in there. And then each ring has a height of 1.184. 184. So now that's your basic ring right there. If you wanted to, you don't have to make the rings, you can just extrude all the way up and then model from there or you don't even have to use realistic measurements I just find it much easier to use them if you want to just make this smaller because blender doesn't like big things in the viewport especially talking saying that I'm gonna expand you should make your viewport a few thousand meters so that it doesn't start clipping if you don't want to do this you don't have to just my way of doing things now you're going to delete both the top and bottom faces and then you're going to want to control R to create some subdivisions. Uh, just leave them at the center and then scale those two lines using uh, S and then D on your keyboard then scale them up just below where the top of that ring is. Now what you're going to want to do, deselect all of those and hold alt and click one of the lines right at the top and one of the lines right at the bottom and hold shift down while doing the second one so that you select both at the same time and scale it in just a tiny bit. And this will give you some of those divots so the rings are actually visible in your final uh, in your final model. But you're not going to want to go over the top with those because um, if you do, it'll be extremely visible and kind of unpleasant. 
and you can also go in and adjust these a little bit more, maybe bring them up using scale on the z-axis again if you feel like they're a little bit too far or too close, but I think that's good right there. Now you have a basic ring right here. Now also on Starship's rings, uh, these are formed from one long piece of stainless steel just folded. So there's going to be some welding points towards the middle. So what I find useful is actually deleting the centermost on one side. You delete the centermost line or edges and then select both halves of the sides that you deleted, extrude them and then scale them in on the Y axis. And then get them as close together as you want, but not touching just yet. We're going to make them touching eventually. However, oh, also don't forget to delete all of the lines. I actually should have, I'm going to go back a little bit and do this a separate way. You should probably actually delete the faces. So delete one, two, three, four, five, six faces, because that'll get rid of the edges too. Then take both of these, hold Alt to select uh, the entire line, and do the same thing, extrude, and then shift, scale on the Y, S, Y. And then get them close, but not touching. Now what you're gonna wanna do is extrude again, but this time extrude on the X axis, so G, X, Move them back a little bit. And now, once they're moved back a tiny bit, not too far, I might actually move them back in a little bit. You want to bridge a new face from edges. And that'll form a new face. Now, this is kind of abrupt in your final model, it's going to look weird, so you're going to want to um, bevel this. So, select both sides again, and then bevel it a little bit. Go as far as you want. It's usually a pretty small bevel, and then add some segments. I would say 5 is good, because you're going to smooth this and subdivide this out later and then you're also going to want to go on the inside another useful thing is to lock your view to the 3d cursor so now i need to get over here i can just move it on the x-axis right over here and now what we're going to do is take that other side of the stuff that we brought in and bevel that as well and I might actually move that a little bit farther in because I have everything selected already right now. So now you have a nice little crease in your ring segment. I might actually bring this in a little bit more even. One thing you can also do that's very helpful when modeling curves and stuff that's kind of curvy like this. Um, can I not? There. Is using uh, proportional editing. Because here, you see I went a little bit too far, so I'm going to want to come back. However, if I go too far back with just regular selecting, it's going to start clipping into itself, which is not good. So here, if I... Uh, use my mouse wheel to make this a little bit smaller and just bring this in kind of like that now I feel like that's a lot better so now we have our first ring basically done you can make this a little bit better if you want. I still don't completely like this. You can clean it up, make it smaller. However, we're just going to move on from here. 
shift D to duplicate it. And now you're going to want to move it up. And go over here. And make sure that... Oh, am I upside down? I'm upside down. Move this up. And make sure that it's the exact same thing you set the height of that previous cylinder to. So for me, I tried to use realistic measurements and used 1.814. So now these are basically going to be touching. However, the nice thing is it has this nice little bevel here for the crease in the ring segments. And then also you have this right here, the bevel that we made. Also, if you wanted to, you could go in and bevel uh, this line and this line here. I'm not going to because I'm going to subdivide it later. But if you like having extremely complicated meshes, that's up to you. If you also pull up a um, picture of Starship, you'll notice that each of its ring segments aren't perfectly in line. So the crease on each ring segment is not exactly at the same place. So, in order to fix that, I found that if you rotate it on the z-axis by about 35 degrees, that gives it a nice look. Um, I'm not sure if that's completely accurate. I don't have an image of Starship open right now. But, you can do what looks best for you. So, now that we have these two ring segments, we are going to, first of all, shade these smooth, or actually, I'm going to subdivide it first. I'm going to go delete this. You might want to subdivide it first a little bit so that it looks cleaner. One thing you should also do when you're dealing with precise measurements um, especially in this case, what subdivisions can sometimes do is clip the mesh a little bit farther down on each side. So what I would do is this will make your mesh look dirty. So if you like having a clean mesh, you don't have to do this. This isn't a necessity, but I prefer doing this. Just make an uh, edge loop and bring that all the way up. So that will mean there's no clipping on the top and then do the same thing on the bottom. And now, uh, no matter how um, messy or clean your mesh is, it will always um, it will always cut up, cut off at the very top. Another thing that subdivisions does that I don't completely like uh, in this case is it gets rid of the nice curve we had right here. Um, and that makes sense because that's what subdivisions do. But to fix that, you're going to want to make some more edge loops and just pull them up, scale them up right to about right there, I think looks good. And now we have some nicer bevels at the top. Don't apply the subdivision surface. I don't find it necessary. You can turn it up a little bit more if you want. But... I find that to be good, and see what I was talking about earlier, this looking a little weird. That's one thing I had feared, so. Uh, when doing that edge crease, if you want to start over right now and just redo that, you're not that far in. Uh, try and make that look a little bit better. I'm not going to, but. Now duplicate that again. Move that up by 1.8. One, four, and rotate it by 35 degrees. Now we're going to combine these two meshes together by pressing Control J. Now these two are one, and we can put an array modifier. So if you go into modifiers here, you already have the subdivision surface, and now you can add an array. And you're going to add an array, not on the X. You're going to add it on the... Actually, I should go back. I just realized I messed something up. Make sure that when you are selecting 
you already rotated this by 35 degrees, so it's gonna mess everything up. You get, you're gonna wanna um, start off with, you're gonna wanna have your light orange selected thing, your main selected thing, have, be the one that has all the zeros on it. So zero location, zero rotation, scale is one. So select that one first, then that one, and then control J. And now it's going to be a lot better. Go back into modifiers, add an array. You're, we're not going to do it on the X. We're going to do it on the Z by one. And now with Starship, Starship I'm pretty sure has 20 rings. Super Heavy might have 40. I forget exactly how many it has. But you can go count for yourself. Um, so... Starship has 20 rings, excluding the nose cone, um, because the nose cone is something separate. You we're going to have to do something separate for that. Um, so you're going to want each of our ring segments have two rings, one normally rotated and one rotated 35 degrees. So make that 10. Now you have 20 rings. And that's a good Starship base, I guess. Um, these are also not solid at all, so you should probably add a solidify modifier. That just makes it a little bit solid. Oh, a little bit too far. I'm gonna make it 0 0.02. This isn't completely accurate, it's going to be, I think it's 3 millimeters thick, which is not... This is 20 centimeters. No, that's not 20 centimeters. That's... I can't do math right now. That's 2 centimeters, or 20 millimeters. So, it would actually be about 10 times this thickness on the real Starship, in most parts. But, we're not going to be focusing on the inside. Towards the bottom, it's a little bit thicker because... Uh, there's some extra support supports in there for the engines and the landing legs, and if you want that to be completely accurate, uh, you can go do that, do your own thing. But for this, I'm going to stick to not adding all of those extra supports on the inside because I find that unnecessary uh, for at least my use case. Uh, but if you want to, go for that. But for this, we're going to need a little bit more thickness. So. Now we have the starship base completely done. What I like to do is set the origin to the center of geometry. Um, did not do that. I guess it's not. But, oh yeah, I would need to apply, don't apply the array modifier, but uh, if you want to, so that your center of the starship is at the center. What I would recommend doing if you don't want to do that, which I don't, set your, uh, find where you would want to have your center of your starship. So I'm going to go back a few steps because I messed up where I put that. Bring it down on the Z by 20 meters or let me do some quick math right here. It would be 1.184 times 10, 1.814 times 10, which is 18.4. So it's actually going to be 18.14 for the exact center of your starship. And now you can set origin to 3D cursor, and now your origin is at the center, which is a lot nicer in my case. So now for making the nose cone you have two options you can do it the very simple way with just uh, take your cylinder extrude it up a little bit so you have i'm pretty sure starship's nose cone is somewhere around 15 meters tall somewhere in between 13 and 15 meters um 
you scale the top face all the way down to zero, and then add some ring segments to just level this out and make it somewhat accurate. What I chose to do in my starship is I modeled it after um, what they are currently doing. If you look at an image, they are making somewhat ring segments, but it's not like the clean ring segments, like what we have down here with only one crease in it. They have creases everywhere because to make a curved sphere, you need to use some triangles because it's curved in three dimensions, not just two, like this is, like the bottom rings are. So, I'm not going to do that here because that's a little bit too complicated for this tutorial and it's too time consuming for this. However, if you want to go in, what I would recommend doing is not doing 128 uh, the vertices, instead do somewhere in between 36 and 24, depending on how many uh, segments or triangles each ring cut uses, every loop cut uses. And then you can do some beveling, uh, some some of the tricks I showed you down here to make these, except maybe a little bit nicer, and do that. However, here for this, I'm just going to scale this up by, let's see. So if I want, I'm going to plug this into my calculator. I want one point, we're going to, Starship is 50, 50 meters tall, so if you do the math, our bottom segment is 1.814 times 20. That's 36.28. 50 minus 36.28, and we get 13.72. So that's how tall the nose cone is. So if I just then, our ring segment is 1.814 meters tall, so divide that by 1.814, and it's about 7.56. So if you scale this up by 7.56, that's how tall your nose cone should be. You should keep that number written down somewhere, because it'll come in handy when uh, you are trying to line all of this stuff up. In the end. However, we're not going to focus on that right now. We're just going to scale this down at the top, add some loop cuts in, and then I would go in and not use 128 vertices because subdivisions are gonna go crazy on that and they're not gonna like that. So I would actually do something closer to 32 subdivisions on this. And now we go in here. Make sure that you're always in edit mode when scaling because if you ever want to do bevels on this, bevels will start acting weird if you actually scaled it using um, the scale stuff in here. So if I scaled it on the Z, now if I try to go do a bevel here at the top, it's going to be really weird. And uh, in some cases that is good, and if that's what you're trying to go for, you do you, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just going to scale it using edit mode. Also make sure to never move in edit mode because then you'll, you will not have the correct center of your object. Scale this down and then create your nose cone. Again, I'm not using reference, so this isn't completely accurate. Uh, in, I'm pretty sure in my other starships, I did use reference. I definitely did use reference. Um, over here, I'm not. Now I've added a few loop cuts to add some detail to the curve, then go in, add a subdivision surface, Make sure that you have the bottom face deleted, because then you, if not, you're going to have that weird thing that happens right there. But, um, add as many subdivisions as you want. That's pretty smooth. 
Uh, I've noticed that at the top, this sometimes happens, especially with low vertices count, so I used only 32 vertices. That's gonna happen. Uh, ways to combat that is use more vertices, or uh, you can delete this top segment and add in a hemisphere at the top and combine that with the rest of your mesh using uh, bridge edge loops and just line it up and then do the subdivision surface, it will come out a lot better. But that's not what we're gonna focus on here. So I'm going to set this to negative 18.14 because um, we're actually, I'm gonna add zero point because we're about one ring segment short i think so yeah add 1.814 or it won't let me apparently add 1.814 there you go so now that should be relatively lined up there and now we can just add in what we used for our scale, so 7.56, and it will line up somewhat. Not perfectly, but now you can just adjust that in edit mode, and that's pretty good. This does not look like Starship because I did not do the nose cone correctly. It looks like a pointy version of Starship. However, I'm not going to focus on that right now. This is good for what I am doing. Now, the next part of this that we're going to focus on is creating flaps. So, pick your favorite side, right or left side, or on this side, right or left side, whichever side you want to do it. Just make sure that uh, these bevels are on the front right of whichever side you're facing. So if this is going to be your front right here, make sure that these are facing front right because the heat shield tiles are supposed to go on the back right over here. So I'm going to make our flaps on the right side first. Again, I don't have reference. This isn't going to be perfect right here. However, go into edit mode to scale because we are going to use bevels for sure on this. And right here, what we're gonna make first, before we actually make the flaps, is the little holding mechanism that holds the flaps and turns them uh, when it needs to be controlled on descent. So make these somewhat thick so that a flap could fit inside of them. Scale it up, and you're gonna wanna uh, rotate it but keep in mind, rotate it on the x-axis, and keep in mind what your rotation value is. You want it to be a nice rotation value, so I'm going to use 10 right here, so that um, when you come in with your other flap, it fits in nicely. Now I'm going to add a loop cut right here, because we're going to add in our flap right there, and another loop cut right down here. I'm also going to uh, bring this in a little bit, a little bit closer. And at this point, it's just a case of what you think looks best, and what your reference says. But here, what you're going to want to do is, um, what's that called again? This is called insetting faces. So you're going to want to inset your face, and then select the two side ones that come along with it, and kind of bring that in a little bit. Oh, I should have proportional editing turned off for this. Make sure you also have some loop cuts on the top so it doesn't move along with the rest of your model, along with the bottom as well, because those all share a vertice 
They also share these vertices right here, those at the top too, so it's going to end up moving those. You don't want those to be moved. So we're going to inset those faces a little bit. And now we have a nice uh, place for our flap to sit. I'm going to move this out a little bit more so that we have a nice square shape. These are relatively square, at, um, these faces at the bottom on the real thing. So you want them to be as square as possible. I'm also going to scale this in a little bit to make it just a little bit more and I think that's good. Now this looks way too small and I definitely didn't get the sizes right, but for this case it's good. Add another cube. Bring this up. Now here, make sure you rotate it while not in edit mode. This one doesn't matter where you rotated it, edit mode or not, but here make sure you rotate it on the X in edit mode to align with that. Go into, or object mode, not edit mode. Go into edit mode now and make your edit so that it lines up. Scale on the Z. If you double click Z after pressing scale, it will scale on its actual Z axis. And then just move this into place. Um, you're also going to want to add a loop cut midway through, right about there. And at this point, it's just configuring your uh, your flap to look like the real thing. So, on current models, I got this wrong on my first SN11 video uh, because I used the wrong reference image to model it. However, on current Starship designs, right here you should have a right angle, basically. And this should be horizontal, this bottom part of the flap should be horizontal with the surface. And then you bring this part right over here, back here. Now that does not look right because I definitely did something wrong. However, you bring this back in a little bit, back down, and it'll eventually look right. This is again way too small because I don't have reference pulled up. However, on yours, hopefully you will. Now, for both of these, you can subdivide this if you want. You don't have to. Depends on your computer. And then if you subdivide it, you should also add in loop cuts to find some main geometry. I'm not going to subdivide this. However, I am going to subdivide um, the actual flap. So, we're going to subdivide it, and then use some loop cuts to retain some of the original geometry. So, I'm going to do that real quick. Add in this, add in this, 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 and this. So, there we go. We have uh, some bevels on the flap that looks incredibly wrong however keep it the way it is parent your flap to your flap holder and now you should probably go in and name these as well so i'm going to call these rings i'm going to call this the nose cone call this the f top right or just top flap Older. And then this should be top flap. Now, what you're going to go in and do is mirror both of these things. So using a modifier, mirror them, and then use a mirror object. Set your rings as the mirror object. Make sure it's mirroring on the y-axis, not the x-axis. And then same thing with your actual flap. You're going to find mirror. 
on the y-axis and through the rings. Now you have both of your rings. Do, I'm not going to do this here because this tutorial is also already getting long, but you should repeat this for the bottom flaps except without the rotation because you don't need rotation on the bottom flaps. They're basically or parallel or perpendicular to the surface. Now we're going to move on to Raptor engines. So at this point, probably just um, control J your nose cone. Oh, whoops, that didn't work. Control parent, control P to parent your nose cone to that, to your rings, and then do the same thing but here, um, your flap holder to your nose cone. So we can just move this up and have at the bottom. What I did in my previous model, uh, in my SN11 video, was I just added a plane, a circle, and then filled it with and and gone made sure that it was or I filled it with the triangle fan and made the radius 4.5 and just moved that up as the place where my engines would stand but in my newest SM20 video what I, I did something a little bit more complicated with a cone I flipped the cone upside down so rotate Y 180 and then grabbed the top of this cone, scaled it out a little bit more, and moved that up here. Because in the actual starship, it's more of like an inverted cone with, uh, and then you can select all of these faces as well. Uh, press C to select everything really fast, and inset the faces individually. So if you want to set them individually, just press I one more time right after that, and then extrude back right into where they came from. And that gives you a nice little uh, engine holder thing that's somewhat realistic. You can make it more realistic if you choose, not what I'm doing here. Now for your raptors, what you're going to want to do is a very simple way of doing it, just grabbing a cylinder. I'm going to get rid of the radius measurement, just go back to the regular radius of 1. Oh, oops. Go back to the radius of 1, depth of 2. And now, you can, it's a little hard to see here, but scale that down, make a cone shape. You could do this with an actual cone, it's just you can't use, um, what are these called, edge cutter things. Now just scale that out to make an engine nozzle shape. This isn't completely accurate, obviously this is the wrong shape entirely. Um, that's not what I'm going for here, just explaining the concepts. Delete the bottom face, and now you have a basic Raptor engine that will function as it needs. If you want to be more advanced, which I'm guessing a good amount of you do, you can instead um, take a cylinder, do the same thing at the bottom, except at the top, you go on creating the extra raptor stuff. So if I bring this down along with uh, raptor after that, it goes up a little bit, I think, then comes out a little bit. And then that, and then around it is a bunch of wires. So for wires and uh, tubes and stuff, a really simple way, an easy way, is to just get a curve, get a brazier curve, and um, then curve your way around the way that you want your wire to flow. It's pretty simple. Then extrude size, extrude it just a tiny little bit, depending on the thickness you want. Go back in here, um, select all, do I need to do anything? No. Now you can just uh, add a solidify modifier, take off shade smooth, 
make sure that this is in kind of a cube shape so the width and height of each of these things are the same. So that looks relatively good. Now you're going to convert this to a mesh. The modifier will go away, which is exactly what we want. Now you can go back in, add a subdivision surface modifier, and now you have a relatively good looking wire. You can shade smooth now, and just repeat that over again for whatever you want to do. But not our purpose here. Um, I'm going to go back in to here. Make this a little bit more realistic of an engine. Scale this down. Using reference is especially good here to get the correct size of the raptors. There are three regular sized raptors. You can do the same process for the vacuum raptors if you want to do that too. Also, you would probably want to align them better than I did right here. But that's three basic raptor engines. Right here, I'm going to open my own previous model because this is getting hard to look at. Um, which one is it? We'll just open my entire launch facility. So, this is my better looking Starship. Still has the incorrect flaps, I think. Uh, but that's besides the point. One, a few added details I added onto my model were uh, some tubes. If you look at the Starship, it has fueling tubes in the front because it fuels from the bottom as of right now. That may change in future versions, I'm not completely sure. And then also I added heat shield tiles on the back. This is a very tedious process if you wanted to line the entire thing with heat shields. But um, basically what I did was just made a singular, singular hexagonal shape using a cube and then made it perfectly hexagonal. Uh, then beveled it a little bit on the top to make it a little bit more smooth and then just duplicated it a bunch. You can do that to line your entire thing, it'll probably look better, but another way of doing it is just to add a simple cylinder, scale it up just a tiny bit larger than the actual Starship is, um, scale it, so select the top face, and just move it up, and then basically just follow the basic curve of the Starship, and then delete this half. So, turn on X-Ray, go right here, Alt-A to deselect all, and then B, press B, it will give you this box, select all of them on that half. You're also going to want to select that, select any you missed, and delete the faces. Now here, um, to be a little bit more accurate, you wouldn't actually delete all of them, you would leave some that are a little bit closer because on the real version it's going to have heat shield tiles going on the front a little bit to protect it from any uh, extra heat that might be coming that way. But here, now you can texture this using a normal map and just a black coating to create fake hexagonal tiles. But I already have some on here, oh, I did it on the wrong side anyway, it would want to be on this side. But that's the basic idea of what it is. Now, for making flames, we're going to start getting into animate. Actually, before I get into the animation, right here, how I made this, if I go into the material view, what I did to make Boca Chica, Texas, in my this was something new that I did for my new uh, SN20 flight to Mars. Oh, a disclaimer on that. I know a lot of people were commenting um, that SN20 will not fly to Mars. Yes, I know SN20 will not fly to Mars. Um, SN20 hopefully will go to orbit, but that's about it. Uh, the reason I named it that is because eventually in 2021 or 2022 is the next window. 
uh, I think it's September, August, September of 2022 is the next window for um, flights to Mars. Or maybe September, October. But by then, we could have a completely different design for Starship. They might have gotten rid of all of the rings, smoothed it out, changed their flap design, who knows? They might have a completely separate version of Starship just to go to Mars. Um, so I labeled that SN20 because that is what SN20 will look like when it is fully constructed. Hope most likely, we don't completely know, but that's why I labeled it that. Getting back to modeling, if we move our, th our I'm locked to 3D cursor, so if I move this down, you'll see that I did a much better job here of map modeling both uh, vacuum raptors and raptor engines. Uh, to get a basic design idea of what I did, uh, there's kind of some of it, you can barely see it, but that's what I did for these. I also added in landing legs. These are very poorly modeled landing legs because these were last a last minute addition that I added because I kind of forgot about them. But you can obviously, all I did was made a cube, parented it to this other cube that I inserted, um, and it set the center to the bottom so that it rotates. When you rotate it on its X, it will flip right down. That's not completely accurate because that's not what the Starship legs look like, and it's probably not what they will look like when you go to Mars. However, uh, to what we're using now, it's not even what we're using now. I still got this wrong. Make your own. Find some designs, make your own for that. However, what I'm going to focus on now is how to make the particles and flames of Starship. So, what I use is just add a plane, line it up with the engine, make it just a tiny bit smaller than the engine. If you go up here to this button, this allows you to um, add some new things like, you know, here you can toggle the viewport. I also added a to disable and renders button. You're going to want to disable the plane in renders. So, if you look at many of the Starship um, launches, SN8, SN9, SN10, and even some of the static fires, it usually blows out a ton of smoke right, or not exactly what it is. It blows out a ton of smoke right before it launches. So what you're going to want to do is go into your uh, physics properties, add in a fluid, add in a flow, start off with smoke. We're going to have it be smoke for about 20 frames or 25 frames actually, so a full second of it just spewing out smoke towards the bottom. You're going to want to set an initial velocity, a normal of negative, I think I use negative 40 or negative 60, and that's meters per second. So source you can keep at 1. Add a keyframe right here. Oh yeah, also change this to inflow, not geometry. Then go one frame in the future, change this to fire and smoke. Now it's going to start spewing out very rough fire. It's not clean fire because uh, for about a second right before Starship launches, it the Raptor engine hasn't fully caught just yet. So uh, it's way less than a second. I just like to exaggerate it. So I'm going to go to frame 40 here add another keyframe, and change this now to just fire. This is what I do right here. Now at 41, start a particle system. Make sure it starts at 41, ends at uh, whenever you want your particle system to end. I usually do a thousand particles or 2,000 particles per frame. So count up the amount of frames that you have here. We're doing about 80 frames, so I'm gonna say 1,600 particles would probably be good. So it would be 200 particles a frame. That's besides the point, my math is bad. Now it's just gonna flow out like that. You don't want that to happen. That's not how a 
rocket exhaust looks like. Set the normal to about negative 100 meters per second, and now it's going to shoot out the bottom really fast, and looks half decent on animations. You, and uh, then you just go into here, also at frame 40, add a keyframe on mesh down here, because originally it's just going to be the mesh. Now you change it to particle system and particle settings. Oops. Particle settings. Now uh, you can add in your domain. I usually make my domain a lot bigger and it causes my computer to crash a bunch. And also you're going to want to set the floor to be a collision on both fluid and a regular particle collider. But uh, we're going to add this, create the domain. And now if I just start it up, or apparently not. I thought it's on replay mode. Yeah, whatever. Basically, oh yeah, because we're not in viewport. We're not, whatever. We'll go back here for now because it looks nicer. But that's the basic idea. You might also want to add a little bit of randomness into your particle. So add a little bit of randomness in your particle velocity and the direction. And that'll give you a little bit better of a result, in my opinion, at least. Now, that's the way that I've been doing it. However, I recently found a video, I'll link him right at the top, um, that I kind of like better. Basically, what this guy did in his video was he modeled the flame entirely. And it makes it look a lot cleaner at the top and a lot more realistic. However, I've decided that I found an even better way that I have not tested yet, so I'm not going to test it right now because I'm not going to model this entire thing. This video is long enough. But basically what he does is he create he models the flame, the top part of the flame, the clean part of the flame, and then towards the bottom, if you look at an image of the Raptor engine firing, it kind of spews off into fire. So what I would do is pretend that this is the flame. It goes out and then in and then out, and then in, and now it's gonna kinda like spew off a little bit. Oops. Towards the bottom when it starts spewing out, you should uh, create a vertex. So add a vertex group, assign to that group all of the faces that you've selected, all the vertexes. And now, if you go create a particle system, make sure that when you go down to, uh, where is it? Vertex groups. You uh, make sure you put in that vertex group to make sure it only projects from there, the, bo the very bottom. And now you should have realistic smoke coming from it, realistic flames and you also have the cleanness at the top. So I think that's the best way to do it. You can try doing that. But um, that's what I've done for flames. On Super Heavy, in my recent uh, SN20 Flight to Mars, that one I just made, I did not do it individually for each Raptor. On Starship, yeah, there's only three to six engines. It's not that hard, however, on Super Heavy, there's supposed to be like 30 to 40 some odd Raptor engines, crazy amount. Uh, I was not going to make a plane for each of those. So I just made one big plane. Doesn't look as nice. However, it works. It's fine. Now, uh, beyond this, I'm going to delete this plane for now. And this cube. Animating. I've found that animating realistic physics in Blender is not the best thing. Uh, you can add, make this a rigid body by going into here, make it a rigid body. Now it will fall with everything it has attached to it. Oh, and by the way, if you guys were wondering what these plans are, these are just for the uh, venting that happens on Starship right before it launches and right before Basically, the raptors fire up at any time it starts to vent. Um, another thing I've 
getting a little off topic right here, but I have not found a good way to make white smoke in Blender. Blender doesn't like white smoke, uh, which is what the venting from Starship is. It's white smoke. So, um, very hard to do that. If you can figure out a way to do that, please let me know. I have not. Um, but yeah. Besides that, animating. So, physics sims in Blender are really weird, especially with rockets, because if you go into force fields, you have basically every force you can think of except for a thrust force. So you can't add directional thrust. The best you can get is wind, and wind doesn't work perfectly because it's wind. It's supposed to be more of a drag thing, not accelerating constantly, like a force does, and force is not directional. So it won't cause your rocket to rotate or anything like that. And especially, um, a lot of, uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people want, um, to do something like Kerbal Space Program where they're able to land it, uh, but very precise using nodes and stuff. You can't even use nodes. It's, it's very hard. It's very difficult. I would just stay away from physics sims when using rockets unless you're 100% sure that this is the right way to do it, especially with aerodynamics and the flaps. With Starship, very confusing. Stay away from it. What I choose to do is instead animate it. What you can do is animate, so we're gonna start off here, I'm gonna go back into viewport, turn off our rigid body, however animate it, so that up here we go to, let's say, 100 meters, 100. what you'll see is it speeds up at first goes at a constant velocity and slows down. That's not how a rocket works. You might be saying, yes, it is not how a rocket works. How a rocket works is it's uh, accelerating. So it starts off at zero and starts going much faster as you go along in time because it has constant rocket fuel fueling out at the bottom. Pull open a new thing by just dragging. There's a little space right here. A little cursor will appear. Click on that, drag it out, and it will create a new tab down here, basically. Go to the left here, editor type, you're going to pick graph editor. And now we can see the actual graph of Starship moving. What you're going to want to do is, down here this is perfectly fine, it has an exponential graph of it speeding up. We don't want it to slow down. So you can just click this and rotate it down. Now, if we look at this, it starts off slow and then starts accelerating. Perfect. Not perfect, because that's not exactly how it looks in real life. You're going to want to edit this to your pleasure, whatever you think looks best. You can frame it up with the star the one of the actual Starship launches and figure that out. However, I just prefer to eyeball it. Same thing can be done when coming down. If you're coming down, so we'll say it would obviously be coming down on the landing pad right over here. And we're going to be rotated negative 90 degrees like that. Uh, you would animate the flaps. So on here, I didn't actually mirror these, so you have to, on mine, I would have to animate each of the flaps individually. However, um, on yours, hopefully you mirrored them, so it'll be a lot easier. Uh, when Starship comes down, both of its flaps are kind of up, then the top flaps push down, so rotate on the Z, they kind of push down a little bit to give some force, and then the t bottom flaps will go even farther up. So you now the torque on the physics is pointing right up here, and it will flip the rocket, then the engines ignite, and you can figure out how to animate that. What it usually does is... Uh, it slows down, or it speeds up a tiny bit as it's in the middle of its flip maneuver because uh, that's when it has the least torque of rocket, some of the rocket forces, the, the rocket engine force is still pointing over here and it's got the least amount of air drag, it speeds up a little bit. 
uh, for the rest of the flight, it's mostly n decelerating, uh, not decelerating, it's mostly at a constant velocity because uh, the air is in the air force, not air drag pushing up on the rocket is the exact same as gravity pushing down. So, um, because drag is proportional to velocity squared. So as you speed up, the drag force gets much higher. Basically, it's going to be coming down at a constant velocity. So you can just, uh, if we start at, let's say, 300 per se, 300 meters. Go down a little bit, uh, let's say 80. We go to 150. Now, here, just click on your top one. This top one right here, well, if I can click on it, and just make it linear because it's going to be a constant velocity. Now here you're going to flip, so you can animate the flip. This video is long enough, I'm not going to actually animate it here, but basically you would just animate the rotation of it flipping that way. It goes a little bit farther that way so that the um, because the engines still need to cancel out the torque that the rocket has and then it starts going back it levels out and then hopefully would just go straight down from there um, and it would be decelerating on the way down so you would not want to have it be constant you would want to just have the inverse of a uh, of what you had taking off basically and then you can also animate the landing legs so that they flip out right before they land and obviously hopefully it would not be landing on the launch pad because that would probably need to not be that good you would want to have it land over here um to make this little area by the way i just took uh an image of boca chica that i found on the internet and modeled it after and then for the other plane if i turn on here you can see that this is just uh google Earth, um, and I screenshotted Google Earth and composited a few images in Photoshop to get, you can kind of see right there, composited it right there to get uh, more space, I guess. And then uh, I also added in an HDRI in the background. You can get those off of HDRI Haven for free. And uh, I had to frame my shots up very consciously so that I didn't have too many mountains in the background because I wanted this to be kind of looking like Boca Chica and Boca Chica doesn't have mountains uh, as a few of you pointed out in my SN11 video uh, but you can do that also for the textures I forgot to mention this earlier uh, there's a website called cc0textures.com which you can get a bunch of different free textures for Blender from and then go into uh, your shader editor and texture those. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I think I covered pretty much everything. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. Uh, besides that, I will be working on making uh, some more content, uh, especially Starship content. I've been thinking about recently, uh, they started developing the orbital launch tower, which is right around over here. It's so nice that I have this model, uh, right next to the orbital launch mount, their first orbital launch mount. Um, once they get their designs figured out exactly, and I can start to see somewhat what it will look like, I'm going to, uh, model that out in Blender and hopefully make a hyper-realistic. I'm gonna use that new technique on the engines. I'll update my model in Blender, get some better heat tiles, uh, and hopefully make a hyper-realistic version of what the true SN20 launch will look like. Not if SN20 went to Mars, but hopefully what will happen in July. So that's some stuff to look forward to. I'll hopefully have that done uh, within the next month or so, depending on how fast SpaceX can get their stuff together, launch SN11, and get the stuff over here figured out. And also get their designs passed for their updating their Boca Chica launch facility to include, I think, another landing pad somewhere over here, another launch, orbital launch tower, um, 
and maybe I'll even see if they change anything for SN20. But that's about it. I think I covered basically everything. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll, I don't think this is going to get as many views as my previous videos because it's like, what, 40 minutes, 50 minutes long now. Uh, but ask, the, ask away in the comments if you have any questions. I'll try to answer all of them. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I hope this was helpful.